so we'll start. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the uh, topic two. Uh, so this topic two is uh, about import-export taxes in Vietnam. Uh, maybe tomorrow we're gonna have a Zoom session. In Zoom session, I will explain you about the um, uh, the, uh, the the procedure or, or the steps or the topics that you're gonna study in your uh, upcoming uh, lectures or upcoming videos. And in in, in tomorrow's Zoom session, I will also explain you about the structure uh, that uh, that your tutor. Uh, he asked me to follow that structure like us today we will discuss about import export tax and then maybe next week we discuss about uh, the corporation tax and then uh, income tax uh, just for your knowledge uh, in the previous uh, session I, will, I gave you a very general information about the different types of taxes like as direct tax and indirect tax uh, direct tax we discuss about the income tax corporation tax uh, capital gain tax and uh, indirect tax, we discuss about the value added tax and import export uh, duties or import export taxes. Uh, please note that indirect tax, uh, you will not study about capital gain tax because in Vietnam there is no any uh, capital gain tax. There is a capital gain tax uh, which is called property tax, but uh, the requirements and the conditions to apply property tax is much more different than the some other uh, capital, capital gain tax in foreign countries, uh, like as probably in Australia. Uh, so uh, in this module, uh, you will not study about uh, capital gain tax. All right, so you will study mainly four tax: uh, income tax, corporation tax, value added tax, and uh, import export tax. All right. So let's start with the topic two, which is about import export uh, tax in Vietnam. Right. <clears throat> So uh, we may not discuss about uh, the uh, calculations of uh, this uh, import-export tax, but we will go much more in detail. But uh, of course, we maybe in this lecture we don't do some calculation, but hopefully next lecture we will do some calculations. But in today's lecture, I will give you some base, some formulas, some tax rates or criteria to uh, implement or to apply this uh, import-export tax in Vietnam, all right? So let's start with the uh, introductions. <clears throat> introductions. So what is import-export tax. Of course, as you can see, the name import-export tax is the tax that we mainly pay on the items which we import, which means we buy from a foreign country, and exports means we uh, sell in foreign countries. So whatever tax we pay on the items, that's called import-export tax, right? So keep in your mind, any kinds of investor, no matter it's a local investor, which means Vietnamese investor, or a foreign investor, any kinds of investor who is willing to start import-export business in Vietnam, it's very important for that person to understand rules, regulations of import-export tax in Vietnam. So that's what we discussed at first, that import-export taxes or regulations in Vietnam, right? Uh, so of course, before you uh, uh, start um, getting any kinds of informations about imposed export tax. So first thing you have to do, uh, you need to uh, set up your uh, business, All right? You have to set up the business, All right? 
So what are the formalities? What uh, uh, what are the license or whatever uh, minimum formalities you must uh, have to start a business in Vietnam? You have to meet all the kinds of formalities. What formalities we have actually? We're not going to study this, this this lecture. Maybe some, some other time I will explain you about the requirements or the formalities you have to meet in order to start a company in Vietnam, to open a company. Of course, you need a business license and partners and so on. But we will discuss some other time. But of course, if you want to start a business in Vietnam, they have some criteria. You have to meet some kind of special requirements, and of course, some kinds of procedure you have to uh, to, uh, to to follow to start your business. All right. So some other time we will discuss about what are the formalities, things that we need to start a business in Vietnam. So let's uh, move on. To, uh, let's come back to our topic, which is import export tax. All right. So. So let's let, let's discuss with the license. Right? So keep in your mind if you wanna uh, involve or engage in any kinds of import export activities in Vietnam, no matter you are a foreigner or you are a local investor, you have to get a license, right? So first of all, we discuss about the procedure to get a license for import export business in Vietnam. All right. <clears throat> So import export license procedure in Vietnam is that what we needed uh, uh, at first. Right. <clears throat> okay. So Keep in your mind, if you are a local investor, you are a Vietnamese, you have a Vietnamese nationality, right? So if you are a local investor or you have a Vietnamese nationality, you do not need any kinds of license to engage in import-export activities in Vietnam, right? So a few points we have to understand. First of all, locals, right? Locals people do not need a business license, all right? local do not require a business license but if you are a foreigner or foreign investor right but what if you are a foreigner if you are a foreigner do you need a license uh, the answer is no you do not need a license even though you are a foreigner but for the foreigner people, the minimum conditions or minimum requirements to start a business is that you have to register with DPI. DPI stands for Department of Planning and Investment, right? So foreigners, they need to register, register with DPI. So DPI stands for <clears throat> DPI stands for Department Department 
of triangle and index map. So it's known as DPI, which is much more common than the full name, which is Department of Planning and Investment. So if you are a foreigner, right, you have to uh, register in this department. So this department is going to keep your records, uh, they're going to get some documents uh, from you, what kind of business, of course, you require a business license, you need a passport, you need a capital uh, information, how much money you're going to invest, how, how did you raise uh, that money and so on, some kinds of evidences such as uh, residence proof, uh, some kind of valid uh, uh, permits or visa to stay or some kind of business visa. So all these kind of uh, minimum requirements or documents you, you have to submit. So once you have submitted, then you, it means you are registered to the, uh, to the DPI and the DPI will issue you uh, some kinds of paper or some kinds of evidence which says that yes, you got a, a registration. Right. So registration is important for foreign nationals, right? <clears throat> okay. Second thing is so here we discuss that locals uh, they do not need a any kinds of business license or they do not need any kinds of registration all right but foreigners of course they need to register with dpi so this is the the condition for local and foreigners and now we move on to the uh, common conditions which is for both no matter you are a foreigner or you are a local for both foreigners and local no matter you are a foreigner or you are a local uh, you have to get uh, uh, some kinds of certificates that certificates known as investment certificates you need to get that certificates from governments and of course that certificates gonna have uh, some kinds of expiration date so after a particular period of time your your, your certificates will be expired right so so for both foreigners and locals they require government require uh, investment investment certificates All right without this investment certificates you cannot start your investment oh sorry uh, import export business no matter you are a Vietnamese or non Vietnamese right so this is the minimum conditions or requirements uh, that uh, we have to meet before we start our import export uh, business in Vietnam right <clears throat> okay now we uh, move on to the next one so remember whatever rules regulation that I am talking about here no matter you start a completely new business uh, which is uh, import export or no matter you transfer or you convert your uh, one business in your import export business all right so i repeat no matter you have a, some kinds of old business and then you transform your business that some other business that that's that, that has no involvement of any kind of import export activities with with foreign uh, countries completely uh, domestic based uh, business all right so, but you transfer your business in import export one option same procedure apply or you start a new company which is only about import import export that's you you never done it before any kinds of business no matter local or international then uh, again same rule will apply on that kind of uh, companies as well right <clears throat> okay 
Now, the third, the fourth thing we're going to discuss in this license procedure is about the uh, the some kinds of things that import export tax uh, implements, right? <clears throat> So keep in your mind, you cannot import whatever you like from foreign country in Vietnam. And of course, you cannot export whatever things you like in Vietnam that you want to send it to foreign countries. All right? So there are some kinds of uh, limits or some kind of restrictions over kind of, uh, uh, some kind of restriction over the uh, some kinds of products that you cannot import and of course you cannot export all right so that things you have to um, keep in your mind all right so remember uh, so i'm writing here uh, products products are banned right the products are banned, you cannot maybe import or export. So let's talk about import. This is about export. Right. Okay. So what kind of products? What kind of products which are banned to, I mean, banned from import? So you cannot import those kind of products uh, from foreign country. Uh, These uh, products involve uh, involve uh, cigars. Tobaccos, uh, petroleum uh, oil uh, products, right? <clears throat> petroleum So cigars, tobaccos, petroleum, oil, um, newspapers, magazines, maybe newspaper and journals, not really magazines, newspapers, newspapers um, also involve uh, journals, so I write down here, journals, journals and newspapers, and aircrafts, right? And aircrafts, right? So these kinds of items you are not allowed to import from foreign countries, right? So maybe governments have a rights to do that or, or, or some special reasons. But here, of course, we're not going to discuss all these items here. And some other items which are banned for export, right? The items which are banned for export is mainly petroleum, So petroleum oil also uh, I mean kinds of product which is uh, banned to export to foreign country. You can export anything except this petroleum oil. Right. 
So this is uh, some kinds of rules, regulations in relation of uh, uh, in, in relation of uh, import exports, right? So remember, these kinds of import exports bans. That's a, that's uh, that's what we discuss about. These kinds of import exports banned by by uh, the, the, the Vietnamese governments. Uh, it has a special law. So there is a name of law. If you are interested to know about the name of law, because of course I will not discuss about what more inside law, but for your additional information, maybe you or some of you are involved or are interested in import export activities that that you can import or you can export. If you are interested, so you can visit uh, this. Uh, if you if you Google this link, so you have a much more information about it. So I'm going to write down here. It's a, some kinds of law, all right? Law or uh, circular. Some circular slash three four two thousand thirty slash. So if you search uh, this circular, you simply Google this uh, circular, then uh, Vietnamese import exporter government websites will open and all the information which is given on the websites will be in Vietnamese. So if you are interested to know about this, some, some detailed information about these import export items that which are banned, then you can go and, and get some more information. Right? Okay. <coughs> Okay, uh, now as we discuss here, as we discuss that, uh, that uh, both kinds of people, no matter foreigners or local, they require uh, investment certificates. All right, uh, now what you can do with this investment certificates all right so what uh, i would say that what is a framework all right what is the scope of applying this investment certificates in your import export business all right <clears throat> so according to this certificates or if you have a uh, this certificate you can import export uh, some certain kinds of uh, goods that government permits you, right? Uh, now, what these import export uh, things that government includes under these investment certificates? What these items are? So let's discuss about this. Uh, this require investment certificates so i repeat this investment certificates basically uh, some kinds of uh, some kinds of products or some kind of certain products that government gives you permits all right and then you can you, you uh, so you can do specific things if you are holding such kinds of investment certificate of course which is required right so this includes uh, goods subject to export control in accordance with international treaties to which Vietnam is contracting party. All right. So the first thing is so the first thing is goods import. with international treaties 
or under international treaties uh, from which government is contracting. All right. So the idea is if you want to import or export, let's say you want to import. So you cannot select a country, whatever country you like. No. There is a list of the countries that we will not discuss here. There is a list of countries that's available on the website. I will give you the link so you can go and visit. There is a list of companies, uh, countries, only from those countries you can import. Because maybe Vietnamese government, of course, they have a, some kind of international agreements or contract to buy or to sell products to those countries. Right. So goods import and export with international treaties. With international treaties. International treaties means international agreements, contract or any kinds of uh, um, memorandum of understanding or any kinds of uh, international agreements in order to buy and sell product from those countries, right? <clears throat> so I repeat, you, you cannot choose whatever country you like to import or to export the, uh, the product. So you have to visit the government websites that which is indicating the name of countries, right? Second thing is uh, if if you want to export to foreign countries, so keep in your mind, you have to focus on the quotas, right? Quotas by foreign country. So for example, you want to export, let's say Vietnam. Vietnam is export for, uh, famous for uh, coffee, coffee and rice. And uh, you want to export coffee to, to Singapore. So if you want to export coffee to Singapore, so there is a limit to export coffee to Singapore. You cannot, you means Vietnam cannot export as much as they like it. Right. So that quota, of course, is decided by the Singaporean uh, country, I mean Singapore, that uh, you cannot you cannot export more than that quantity to to Singapore. And same same rule also implement to the import items. So if you want to import some some specific items from Singapore to Vietnam, of course, there is a, some kinds of certain limits. All right, quotas means the the, the some kinds of limits. Right. So certain limits are uh, are given or decided by the that foreign national, the foreign governments, and then they will, they, they will strictly track the quantity that is supplying, of course, in exporting to to, to that particular nations. Right. But of course, that's also responsibilities of the uh, Vietnamese governments that we are exporting some kinds of products to to that country, and of course, we have a limit. Right. So keep in your mind uh, these things. <clears throat> Another thing is uh, if you are involved in some kinds of um, some kind of exceptional products, then you may need a special permits. All right. So that exceptional products involve chemical explosive pre-substances or industrial explosives, right? So in simple words, chemical and explosive substance, substance or explosive uh, items. <coughs> Chemicals and explosive 
uh, this could be an industrial explosive or this could be an uh, explosive pre-substance. So that's kind of items uh, you need a special permits from the governments if you are willing to export. That's kind of items or if you want to import, of course. So you need a special, uh, uh, special kind of approval from the uh, from the government, right? Okay. <clears throat> So now we move on to the um, uh, next. <clears throat> uh, please uh, remember that uh, you, if you are an importer or exporter, you have to uh, follow Vietnamese regulation very strictly right, for import and export. Right? And second thing, uh, you have to uh, focus is uh, make sure you have to maintain of course for the exporter right you have to maintain the uh, the, the, the food safety and the product quality you have to maintain certain kind of food safety and and, and, and and product quality if you are involved in the exporting business in Vietnam all right so product quality is very Important. You cannot provide, you cannot export a bad quality products uh, to the foreign countries. So this is the law uh, in in, in Vietnam, right? So of course, of course, before you exporting the items, you have to clear the customs, no matter in. Right? <coughs> okay. So all the kinds of uh, customs uh, forms and uh, any kinds of documents must be uh, done. Uh, electronically and then uh, you can proceed to the uh, next step so once the custom has been cleared right so now we move on to the next which is the uh, duties applies to import and exports uh, so here, so we finish uh, number two. So let me write down here again. So this is number one. We we discuss about the interaction first, and then import export licensing procedure. In this import export licensing procedure, we discuss about local foreigners and both, right? Now we discuss the uh, third outcomes, you can say that. So third outcome, this duties applies to import export. applies to import export. Number three. Okay. So keep in your mind uh, All kinds of goods need to pay duties, right? Except few things, few products. So I'll write down here. All kinds of products. of products must pay duties all right but in this all kinds of products must pay duties involve some kinds of exception so duties accepts few products right 
So few products involve any kinds of product which pass between non-tariff zone. All right. If any kinds of product pass between non-tariff zone and subject to import export items then you don't have to pay uh, import export duties on it right so except pass on non If you, you, you're passing or your product is passing from um, non-tariff zone, then you don't have to uh, pay for any kinds of uh, import or export uh, duties. Right? Second thing that you have to remember, if the product is in transit, right? if the goods in transit. So goods in transits means uh, goods uh, is on the way. It hasn't delivered or it hasn't uh, come yet. Right? The product hasn't delivered because when we, when we deliver the product, we're gonna have a confirmation from the foreign nationals, right? So once we got the confirmation that the product has been delivered, then company has to pay for uh, pay for export tax. The same thing happened with the import. Once you bought it from foreign nations, right? Product, product hasn't delivered or product hasn't reached to Vietnam, then we don't have to pay import duties, right? So product transits, right? <clears throat> So now we move on to the another points, which is uh, duties applied to import and exports. Yeah. Duties applies to the import and exports. So second thing, uh, which is important, regards to duties, it's remember that uh, most goods or services that we export are exempt exempt from the taxes right in the internet so most of goods and services most of goods and services exported are exempt exempt from the taxes so we don't have to pay uh, kind of uh, duties right um, and um, and it's I said it's the most of uh, goods and services right but some kinds of uh, goods and services on which of course you have to pay export duties right so your export duties is basically between 0 to 45 percent right most of uh, products you don't have to pay duties export duties but the range of export duty is 0 to uh, 45 right but some kinds of products uh, on which you have to pay a uh, kind of duties some kind of exceptional products so except so except in this 
except in both in this except involve uh, minerals, forest products, and scrap materials. Minerals, uh, forest products, and So these kinds of uh, products, uh, these kinds of products, uh, on which you don't have to pay uh, any kinds of, uh, sorry, you have to pay uh, export duties, right? Okay, so these are the things that you have to uh, keep in your mind regarding the things that, that you have to pay export items. I repeat, more, majority of export items, you don't have to pay export duties, but these, these kind of products involve mineral, forest products, and the scraps you have to pay uh, uh, export duties. And now we move on to some other kinds of products that which do not come in the normal categories that's that normal population of the countries they do not buy that products so that products known as a luxury products that which is not afforded by the every and nationals so we still discussing about uh, the, the, the duties duties of to export so third, third duties that we discuss is a luxury products. Duties on luxury products. Luxury items. So let's discuss about the duties related to uh, luxury items. Okay, so keep in your mind all the kinds of luxury products you have to pay very heavy import duties, all right? So, paid heavy import duties, no matter what kind of luxury item is. If you're, if you're really buying luxury item for foreign countries, you have to pay uh, a very uh, very um, high but the minimum item minimum rate is like seven percent but the maximum could be 100 percent so let's say if you're buying a very luxury cars which is cost is maybe uh, I don't know let's say one million dollars then you have to pay 100 percent tax so it's, so huge so it's the cost for you could, gonna be like two million dollars so you're 100 percent tax on the the luxury items no matter what kind of of course these are categories decided by the, the governments uh, which which classify that these items comes in the in the luxuries or it, it's not count as a luxury right it, it depends okay so that's uh, all about uh, uh, that's all about the duties that we uh, discuss about uh, import and export. So let's move on to the next, which is uh, tax applicable on um, uh, uh, imports or, or, or duties applicable to only imports, right? So which is uh, number three. So 
sorry, number four. So number four. Number four is about the uh, uh, or about the tax applicables on import items. So tax applicables. Uh, tax rates or duty import duty rates you can call it import tax or you can call it import duties so import rates so import duties rates divided into three different uh, categories so we have a uh, three different categories of the tax rate which implement on the import items so this uh, these uh, rates involve uh, preferential rates special preferential rates and the ordinary rates so we have three types of duties from Vietnam. so we have uh, three types of duty rates in this three types of duties rates involve Third one is a ordinary rate. So three kinds of uh, duties. So remember, these duties are import, right? Right down here, imports, import duty rates, right? So in this import duty rates. So the first one is a uh, preferential rates. Preferential rates implements to those countries which are known as a most favored nation for Vietnam. All right. Most favored nation of Vietnam means there is a list of the countries which is around 149 countries in the world. And Vietnamese government call these 149 countries are the most favored nations. So means Vietnam uh, will give them some kinds of favor in order to increase the import export business in those countries. So which means special tax rate will apply on that one. So which which gonna be normally lower than the countries which are not part of the most favored nation. So let's say uh, I have a list of not favored nation and the list of favored nations so if my countries comes in the list of favored nation then vietnam will import any items for that most favored nation so of course vietnam will pay a less tax right if that company is part of the most favored nations it's kind of mutual agreements among uh, countries all right it is not not only happening in vietnam of course it's happened for some other probably like the US so they also have a list of more favored nations so whenever US will import anything from from that most favored nations items Vietnam will uh, sorry US will pay uh, less import duties right so some kinds of things happen right so there are around 149 countries right so let's so these are 
most favored nations. So, most most favored nation. Most favored nation. So this is around 149 countries. So that's come under the list of more uh, most favored nation. All right. Uh, next is a uh, special preferential rates. Special preferential rates only implements to specific countries which comes under the Asian uh, Asian contract, right? Or ASEAN. So only for I hope you know ASEAN. It's basically a contract. Uh, between a Southeast Asian countries, but not all Southeast Asian countries. Uh, as far as I know, I think it's like around nine, three, nine, nine countries or eleven countries. Uh, I'm not sure, but make sure you check it. But Asian uh, countries are uh, those countries is like as the Europe. So in Europe, not in, of course not England. Uh, in Europe, if uh, if you import or export items from one European country to another European country is probably you don't have to pay tax on it. So we call it free trade zone. All right. So or free trade agreements. So exactly the same thing happened in this Asian. So if you are part of that Asian nations, um, of course China, Japan, and South Korea, so they are not part of this Asian. So probably some Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Laos, Cambodia, I guess. Uh, so if you are part of these kinds of nations then uh, you don't have to pay tax or you have to pay significant um, significant uh, lower amount of tax that you have to uh, pay to government if you're part of that, that kind of specific uh, contract. All right. So this is known as a special preferential rates, so which is implemented to the Asian, uh, Asian countries. So it's known as Asian, A-S-E-A-N. Right. <clears throat> so next one is, um, Ordinary tax rates. So ordinary tax rates apply to those nations which are not most favored nations and which is not part of Asians. All right. You are not a most favored nation, and of course, you are not an Asian. If if you are not part of most favored nation and Asians, that means ordinary tax rate will apply to to you, all right, to the business who is exporting items to that country, all right. So, ordinary tax rates could be up to up to seventy percent. Of course, I'm not talking about the luxury products, if the normal products, the rates can be reached up to 70%, but rate cannot be more than 70% on the items that you are exporting to the, uh, sorry, you are importing from the foreign country, all right? But again, this ordinary tax rate do not apply to the luxury products. So because luxury products are, of course, uh, known as uh, uh, the products which are less likely to get the benefits of exempt taxes. In fact, they pay uh, double taxes, right? <clears throat> okay, so that's the uh, ideas uh, behind the tax uh, applicables on uh, import items. Now we move on to the next, which is about the uh, about the exact. So the uh, the tax uh, which are I mean the the products which are from uh, uh, from taking some kinds of benefits that means exempt so you don't have to pay any kinds of tax on that kind of products right so tax exempt goods right 
number four, tax exempt goods. Sorry, number five, tax exempt goods. So what are the condition or situation in which uh, your product is mainly you don't have to pay any kinds of uh, tax on that product, right? <coughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> what kind of goods on which you don't have to pay import or export tax, right? <clears throat> so the goods which is So the goods which are temporary import to export the items, all right? So we are importing that product, but not for the intention of consumption, all right? We importing intention of uh, re-export it. So I, let's say I purchase some kinds of machine from you, all right? And then I will, uh, I will assemble that machine, so I will, I will make some changes in order to improve the performance of that machine and then I will give it back to you. So that's the example of your temporary import and then later you export, all right? And again, temporary export and then you import it later, all right? So temporary import and export. So, items which is temporarily import and export. So, you temporarily import and then you re export. You temporarily export and then you Re-import. If that's kind of uh, uh, product that you are involved in exporting and importing, then you don't have to pay tax on that kind of uh, product. Right? Uh, you import a goods in service uh, of petroleum activities then you don't have to pay a tax all right i repeat if you import a goods in relation or in order to provide services to petroleum activities, which is of course in Vietnam, then you don't have to pay tax. So, import goods for services in petroleum activities. import for services in petroleum activities if you are involved in such kinds of uh, importing a product then you don't have to uh, pay any kinds of tax right next one is a uh, you are taking any kinds of or you are importing any kinds of goods and services uh, in relation of uh, scientific research or technology technological development all right so 
you import for scientific research and scientific research and development technology development then you don't have to pay uh, any kinds of import duties related to that particular products or particular uh, services right. so that's the uh, that's all about the uh, the uh, the items on, on which you don't have to pay any kinds of tax all right so let's uh, move on to the uh, next uh, items which is tax calculations i repeat i won't I, in this session i may not go tax calculation in much more detail because of course in, in the following sessions, I will discuss more about uh, uh, tax calculation by giving you some practical examples. Right? So it's, today we will discuss much more in, in the theoretical discussion uh, way. All right. So tax calculations. So which is number six, I guess. Yeah, number six. Yes. Uh, calculations. In order to uh, understand uh, the tax uh, import uh, uh, import uh, tax or import export tax, uh, we're gonna uh, understand some something else. Probably you know that, uh, but that is also implement for the foreign countries as well. Let me give example. Like as uh, in the last session, I explained you about VAT. Uh, value uh, added tax. Value tax means when we buy anything, <coughs> then we have to pay tax. Right? Same value added tax implement to the products that we are buying from foreign countries. We also call it VAT. But here VAT for buying foreign products from foreign countries. Right? If you are buying products from foreign country in Vietnam, then of course you have to pay VAT. Right? So you have to pay import duties, you have to pay VAT. Right? So besides uh, import duty and VAT, we're going to pay uh, another tax. That's called a special consumption tax. Right? What is special consumption tax and what kind of, on what kind of products we pay um, special consumption tax, we will discuss it. All right? But uh, I'll give you a quick example for special consumption tax. Special con consumption tax uh, uh, implements for the items that's basically related to tobaccos. This could be a cigar, this could be cigarettes, or it could be a tobaccos. Uh, so all that kind of items, if you import it, you have to pay uh, special consumption tax. So we call it SCT. Right? Uh, besides this, we have uh, one more tax. We have to pay if you import anything from foreign country, which is EPT stands for Environmental Protection Acts. Right. So for Environment Potential uh, Protection Acts means any kinds of products or any kinds of substance or any kinds of supplies or material which is harm for uh, environment, probably the chemicals. So, which is bad for uh, for the environments? We have to pay tax. I'm, I'm, I'm buying any kinds of chemicals from, from Russia. Let's say that, of course, I have to pay environmental protection uh, tax. Right. So the idea is that so total import tax involves four things: import duties, value added tax, uh, special consumption tax, 
and environment protection tax. All right. So tax calculation for total import tax. How we estimate total import tax. Total import tax, as I mentioned, it's a part of it's a part of four kinds of taxes. First is import duties, right? That we just discussed earlier, right? Then we will pay VAT stands for value added tax. You know that. Third one is special consumption tax SCT. And the fourth one is a environment protection tax right. so it's a combination of all taxes that we have to pay in Vietnam if we are buying things from a uh, foreign country so let's uh, discuss with the um, value added tax so value added tax there are three kinds of rates on the value added tax, right? It's a 0%, 5%, and 10%. So that, so that is a combination of three kinds of rates. We have VAT in Vietnam. Zero percent VAT means we don't have to pay VAT. We pay five percent VAT, and we pay ten percent. So these are the rates that we have in Vietnam. So remember, for which kinds of products or items we don't have to pay value added tax. Uh, any kinds of machine that cannot be produced in Vietnam. Any kinds of machine or items which is completely impossible to produce in Vietnam, that's known as items on which we don't have to pay any VAT. So any kinds of machine which cannot be produced. which cannot be produced in Vietnam, we don't have to pay any kinds of value added tax. Right? Now, what items for duties, I mean, that for 5%, right? So 5% items involve medical equipments, sugar, equipment for agriculture production, clean water, fresh and live foods, all right? So that's involved agriculture, machines or equipments, fresh water, Medical equipments, medical equipments, right. um, sugar, fresh and life foods, fresh and life foods, and of course, 
sugar. On these kinds of items, you will pay only 5% VAT. Right? Next is 10% um, items. I mean, the, pro, uh, the items which come with 10% rates. So the item which comes under 10% rates are the items which do not come in 0% and 5% items. So the items which do not fall between so which not fall between zero percent and five percent. The items which do not come here except these items whatever you import you have to pay 10% value added tax all right so this is the uh, ideas behind uh, value added tax in India. Now we move on to the um, second tax, uh, which is the special consumption tax, right? Special consumption tax. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, uh, some kinds of products which are known as luxury products, we have to pay special consumption tax. Right? Besides luxury products, there are some other products on which you have to pay special consumption tax. Right? So, of course, uh, Luxury products, right? Luxury products, some other products, alcohol, Alcoholic beverage, uh, chemicals, uh, beverage, uh, sorry, uh, tobaccos, cigars, etc. I mean, not etc. These luxury products, alcohol items, chemicals, uh, tobaccos. Right. On these kind of items or products. Uh, Chemicals, uh, chemicals involve a petroleum, right? If you go specific, it's a petroleum. So the products which is uh, part of uh, petroleum's activities, petroleum things, on these kinds of items, we're gonna pay a special consumption tax, all right? Okay, so these rates is between 7% to 100%, right? These rates between uh, 7% and 100%. Alright, so these are the rates that we have to, uh, and we will apply on the special uh, consumption uh, products. Right? Um, now we move on to the 
next one uh, environmental protection acts environmental protection acts is uh, any kinds of uh, uh, the products we import the products has a harmful effect on environments all right environment protection means a harmful effects harmful effects on environments if any kinds of products has a harmful effects on environments and of course you are buying that product from foreign country you have to pay environmental uh, protection acts all right so what these items involve so there is not any specific list of the items but these items are mainly common sense for all of us so such as the um, uh, plastics plastic bags and plastic things all right mainly plastic bags or uh, gasoline coal right these kinds of products if we are importing for foreign country we have to pay uh, special tax So, so there is a quick example of how much tax we normally pay on the uh, environment protection tax. How much? I mean, how much environment protection tax? How much tax we will pay? All right. So there is a quick example. So, but example is not for all kinds of uh, uh, environmental uh, 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 harmful products. There, because uh, the, the nature of that product is different than the others. All right, so that's why the ST tax estimation for that product, of course, is going to be different. All right, so there is a quick example for uh, for plastics products. All right, if uh, if you are buying a plastic bags, so so the environmental protection tax is going to be one one point thirty two dollars per kilogram plastic bags all right so it's gonna be uh, tax rates so what is the tax rate so the tax rate is uh, is, is between one dollar 32 cents usd to 2.2 all right usd and that's for one kilo plastic bags right so this tax rate for uh, plastic bags but again it's, it's it's for plastic bags it's not for uh, the gasoline or it's not 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 for coals or it's not for the other kinds of product which is uh, harmful for the uh, environments right so uh, that's um, all about uh, <clears throat> all about uh, informations about the the uh, daily products all right so now um, I would like to give you uh, some very basic uh, information about import partners so I'm gonna tell you the best uh, 10 import partners in 2018 for for made men right so in this best 10 import partners which means uh, from these countries uh, Vietnamese uh, government or Vietnamese uh, companies import a lot of uh, products right so in the, these partners countries uh, involve uh, of course the first is the uh, China second one is the uh, South uh, Korea then third one is United States fourth one is Japan then Thailand and number six Taiwan number seven Malaysia number eight Germany number nine India and number ten is Hong Kong so there are the 
10 nations uh, from so 10 uh, uh, the, the biggest uh, importer uh, uh, I mean the country from uh, from uh, from country that Vietnam import right so so in this uh, top 10 uh, the import of course as I said China which was a 22.2 percent import only from China or from the total import and then second was South Korea which is 13.7 import 7 percent US 12.6 percent Japan 7.9 percent Thailand 3.6 percent Taiwan 3.4 percent Malaysia 2.4 percent Germany 2.2 India 2.2 and Hong Kong 2. So this is basically uh, some basic uh, information about uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, that government Vietnamese uh, companies they import. Uh, all these informations I, I collect from the, the government website, Ministry of Trades websites. If you Google it, you can get the information, but please try to uh, refocus more on the government websites because that data is available, it's much more reliable than some other Wikipedia or some other. So, and um, so that's um, that's all about uh, information regarding. Uh, regarding uh, import export in Vietnam. So of course, uh, there are some other major factors behind uh, import exports uh, in Vietnam. So, I mean, especially the import in, in Vietnam. So the, one of the main reason is that uh, the, the, the growing uh, lifestyles of the uh, middle level income uh, people I mean, middle income level people in Vietnam. So it's, it, their, their consumption power is, is, is continuously improving uh, since 2016 or 17 until 2019. So, uh, and of course, um, Vietnam is the country which is known as the fastest growing uh, middle class countries in the world. So, which in the other words, so you, you can say that. Uh, the people uh, uh, lifestyle is much more improved, right? So from lower income to the middle income, so there is a high, there is a large uh, proportion uh, that has been transferred from 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 lower to to the middle uh, uh, income level group people, right? So that's uh, that's all about. Uh, How to minimize it? How to minimize it? Because I just want to squeeze it. So that's that's all about this uh, this topic. So I quickly give you ideas of what what we studied in uh, in this one. The first one we discuss about the introductions, right? Second one is a uh, import export licensing procedure. Third one is uh, duties uh, in relation of import exports. Number four uh, is about the, the three different kinds of import duties. It's going to be preferential, special preferentials, and ordinaries. Right. Special preferentials implement to the most favored nation uh, and special preferential for Asian countries are ordinary which do not come in the preferential and special preferentials. Right. 
Uh, after four, uh, then we uh, discuss about uh, number five items. So number five was about uh, tax exemption. Um, tax uh, exempt uh, goods, some kinds of goods uh, is exempt from some kinds of taxes, so you don't have to pay tax. And finally, uh, number six was about the tax uh, estimation. Uh, it's a com tax calculation means we dis it means uh, it's a total uh, import tax. So import tax uh, involves the four kinds of tax: import duties, uh, value added tax, uh, special consumption tax, and environmental uh, protection tax. All right. So that's all about your uh, topic two. So topic two is finished here. So I'll see you tomorrow in the uh, Zoom meeting, all right? I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.